Hi friends, in this video, we are going to understand how to set up Kubernetes cluster by using AWS EKS service. All right, let's get started. So first, what we are going to do here. First, I will take one EC2 instance. That instance I'm using as EKS client VM. By using this EKS client VM, I will create EKS cluster and I will deploy applications in the EKS cluster. First, create one EC2 instance, then install AWS CLI software in that machine, then install EKS CTL software in that machine, then install kubectl software in that machine. I will tell you what is the purpose of these three softwares. Once these three softwares are installed in that machine, then we need to create one IAM role and we need to attach that IAM role with this EKS client machine. Why? Because by using EC2 instance, we are trying to create EKS cluster. When one service wants to access another service in the AWS, IAM roles are required. Once the IAM role is attached with this machine, by using EKS CTL software, we are going to create the cluster. EKS CTL we are using as command line utility to set up EKS cluster in the AWS. Once the cluster creation is completed, you can see control plane will be available and two worker nodes will be available. And once the cluster is ready, in order to communicate with the cluster, in order to deploy the applications in the cluster, we are using kubectl software. kubectl is also a command line utility. By using that, we can send the request to the Kubernetes control plane in order to deploy the applications. So in order to deploy the applications, we are going to use manifest YML files. In that YML file, we will configure a Docker image and we will create the pods in the cluster. So the pods will be created on the worker nodes and those pods we are going to expose by using Kubernetes services. I hope you got the clarity what we are going to do as part of this EKS setup. All right, in order to do this work, I have created one document. In the document, I have given all the steps clearly. By following this document, I'm going to do the setup now. The first step, create one EC2 instance by using Ubuntu AMI. In that, we are going to install all these softwares. Let me do that now. I logged in into my AWS account. So if you see, I'm using Mumbai region now. So go to launch instance. Now you can give any name for the instance. I'm giving the name as EKS client VM. Then select the instance AMI as Ubuntu. T2 micro instance I'm using, which is a free tier eligible, right? T2 micro free tier eligible. Key pair, if you already have the key pair, you can use that. If you don't have, you can create a new key pair. I'm creating a new key pair that is EKS key. Then click on create key pair. As we create a new key pair that will be downloaded into our system. Then I'm using default VPC. I'm going to create the new security group with SSH protocol. That's it. So we are creating one new EC2 instance by using Ubuntu AMI. Click on launch instance. Once this instance is launched, now I will connect with this instance by using SSH client. You can use Git bash or you can use putty or you can use mobile extra also. I'm going to use Git bash in order to connect with this machine. Meanwhile, let me locate where my PEM file is available. It is available in the downloads folder. So I will take it from the downloads folder and I will keep in one separate folder for safety. I need to use that PEM file in order to connect with the machine. Yes, I have taken the PEM file and I kept into key pairs folder. Let me open Git bash here. Git bash I'm using as a client software in order to connect with that machine. Okay, machine is started. Select the machine, click on connect. Then we, got, we have the options to connect with the machine. First, give the permission for the PEM file by using chmod command. Then use the SSH command in order to connect with this Ubuntu machine. Copy this SSH command, then connect with the machine. Yes, I want to connect. Fine. So we are able to launch the machine and we are able to connect with the machine. Then next, what we need to do? We should install CLI software, EKS CTL software, and kubectl software. So to install those softwares, I have given the commands here. So copy this command. It is used to install kubectl and execute that here. 
Then once the kubectl installed, go for the next script, AWS CLI, copy this script and install AWS CLI also. kubectl is still getting installed. Yeah, done. So 1.19 version kubectl installed. Now I'm going to install AWS CLI software, right? AWS CLI installed 2.25 version, then install EKS CTL. What is the purpose of this EKS CTL? It is used to create the EKS cluster. Yes, EKS CTL also installed. So with this, we are able to complete machine setup and installation of required softwares. Now we need to create one IAM role. That IAM role should have administrator permission and we will attach with this machine. Once the role is attached, then by using this machine, we can create the EKS cluster. So let's go to AWS IAM service, identity and access management. Here we can see the roles option. Go to the roles, create one new role, create the role. So for the AWS service, I'm going to create the role. Use case, we are using EC2. Click on next and you can select permission for this role. What permissions that we are providing for the role? I'm providing administrator access for this role. Select this and go to the next step and give the role name. You can give any name for that. I'm giving AWS EKS role. Click on create role. Once the role is created successfully, then we need to attach that role to the EC2 instance. How to attach? Go to our EC2 instance, select the instance and go to the action option. It is loading. Yes, there is one machine which is in the running state. It is still loading guys. Machine is in the running state. Go to action, then go to security option here. There you have the option called modify IAM role. So here you select the role that you have created. I created a role, AWS EKS role just now. Then click on update this IAM role. Once the role is updated, now we are good with this EC2 instance. Now by using this instance, we can create the EKS cluster. Before going to create the cluster, let me show you EKS service in the AWS. This is the most trusted way to start, run and scale our Kubernetes based applications. Go to EKS and see, is there any cluster already available in this EKS? Yeah. So here if you see Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service, currently we don't have any cluster. Now we want to create the cluster. So we want to create the cluster in the Mumbai region. Fine. So for that, we need to execute the command to create the cluster. So what is the command to create the cluster? So create EKS cluster by using EKS CTL. As already discussed, EKS CTL is used to create the cluster. Cube CTL is used to communicate with the cluster, right? Now, if you want to create in the other region like North Virginia, the region name you need to specify, the region code you need to specify. If you want to create in the Mumbai region, this is the command. EKS CTL, create a cluster. What is the name for the cluster? In which region you want to create the cluster? And what is the worker node type? Worker nodes, I want to take key to medium. In which availability zones you want to create? So take this command and execute this command in this EKS client VM. So with this command, it is going to start the cluster creation, guys. Fine. Now, EKS cluster creation started. The cluster creation will take five minutes of time. So I will pause this video and we will complete the cluster process. Till the cluster creation is in progress, guys. We are waiting for the cluster creation to be completed. Yeah, guys, finally we can see our EKS cluster is ready in the AP South 1 region, that is Mumbai. Now go to AWS here and we can check that EKS cluster. Earlier we don't have any cluster now. In AWS EKS, we have one cluster ready. We created in the Mumbai region. So by using this command, I have created the cluster. Now to verify the cluster is ready or not, we can execute one command called kubectl get to nodes command. It is used to display how many worker nodes available for the cluster. We have created two worker nodes in the cluster. One control plane is available and two worker nodes available in the cluster. As we discussed, we created EKS cluster that will provide control plane and we attached two worker nodes for the cluster. Now, 
by using EKACTL cluster is created. Now, how to deploy our application in the Kubernetes cluster? For that, we have kubectl. Now, so I'm using a command kubectl get nodes. Kubectl is a CLI software that is used to communicate with the Kubernetes cluster. So if you execute this command, it is giving two worker nodes. So just now we created the Kubernetes cluster two minutes ago, these worker nodes got created. Now let me see kubectl get to pods. Do we have any pods in the cluster? No, currently we don't have any pods in the cluster. Now, how to create the pods in the cluster? In order to create the pods in the cluster, we are going to use manifest YML file. So currently here, we don't have any YML file. Let me create one simple YML file to create the pods. VI, so 01 pod.yml. So in this YML, I'm writing Kubernetes manifest file. I want to create one pod and I want to give the name for the pod as Java web application pod. This pod I want to create by using Docker image. This Docker image is already available in my Docker hub. Okay, this Docker image belongs to my Java web application, which will run inside the Tomcat server by using 8080 as a port number. Now let me save this file and close it. Now how to execute this YML file? To execute this YML file, we will use a command kubectl apply f YML file name. So if you want to deploy your application in the Kubernetes, we need to create a manifest YML. To execute that manifest YML, we will use this command. Enter. Now it will say that pod is created successfully. How to check the pods created? kubectl get pods. So if you use kubectl get pods, now you can see the pod is getting created. Inside the pod, our container will be created. Now pod is ready. The pod is running. One pod I created, that pod is in the running state. 15 seconds ago, pod is created. You can check kubectl logs with the pod name. How the pod is getting created? We can check the logs of the pod also. So these are the pod logs. How can we check the pod logs? kubectl logs pod name. Fine. So with this, successfully, we are able to create Kubernetes cluster by using AWS EKS. And remember, this EKS is a paid service. So whatever the document that I am following to create the cluster, I will give this document link in this video description. And remember, EKS is a paid service. Once your practice is completed, you need to delete the cluster by using this command. EKS, EKS CTL delete cluster, name of the cluster, in which region that cluster is available. By using this command, you can delete the cluster. And thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment your opinion on this video. I will see you in the next video.